guys welcome back if you're new to my channel or just not yet subscribed my name is Brittany and definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button now before we get started I want to let you guys in on something that I'm partnering with that I find just so incredibly amazing like this is the partnership that I think I'm actually most excited about when I found this company it literally blew my mind away. I want to talk to you guys about Earth Rays. Now, my pets, as most of you know, are so important to me. I wasn't aware that a lot of laundry detergent companies actually test on animals, which I'm very much against. Like, I will meticulously, like, search every single product and makeup and shampoo and stuff and make sure that they say no testing on animals. I did a project about that. And it scarred me for life. So not into that. But they don't test on animals. They come in little sheets like this. And if you're doing a smaller little laundry, you can actually fold the sheet in half. It tears easily. And it'll do the entire load. And leave your clothes smelling amazing. You also can get unscented. I got the fresh scent which smells really good and it came very quick. Now the other thing is it helps with the ongoing plastic problem. Now it's really important to recycle you guys but not everything that gets recycled actually ends up being recycled. A lot of it ends up in the landfill which is obviously a big problem but with this it's completely biodegradable which means no waste the other thing is for every package that is purchased 10 loads of laundry detergent gets donated to a a non-profit organization of your choice before you check out you get to choose what organization is helped which is amazing you know exactly where it's going to you can also set up where you receive it monthly so it'll be a automatic payment every month you never have to worry about it you will always have laundry detergent because i know there's sometimes that uh it's just an, i just forgot to go get some and i have to go out to the store again and i have to get some again the monthly payment you also save a ton on this and laundry detergent and it's not more expensive than a jug of laundry from a store so you are literally saving money and helping the environment. So it kind of seems like a no brainer, right? Definitely use my link down below and get started on using yours today. I promise you guys, you will thank me for it. You will not regret it. And you're gonna be helping a lot of animals with this. Now that I told you guys about that awesome product, I'm gonna get into a not so great case. <laughs> so this is the case of Colleen Ritzer. Now, when I saw this case and when I came across it, it blew my mind. Like, it's so messed up, you guys. But we're going to dive in. So let's see. So Colleen was born on May 13th, 1989 in Lawrence, Massachusetts to Thomas Ritzer and Peggy Ritzer. She finished high school at Andover High School and then continued on to Assumption College afterwards to become a teacher. Now she taught algebra at Danvers High School and she was really well loved. The teachers loved her, the students loved her. Everybody had wonderful things to say about her. She was very dedicated and was one of those people that truly loved their job which if you're a teacher I hope that's you because I know that some of the teachers that I had that you could just tell love their job I mean it's so much more fun for the students it made them like they're my favorite teachers like I'm friends with some of them on Facebook like I see them sometimes going in the store and it's such a wonderful experience to still talk to them some of them really helped me and changed my life so Colleen was the oldest of three children. She had a sister named Laura Ritzer and a brother named Daniel Ritzer. It was said that Colleen really knew how to connect with her students. It wasn't uncommon for her to ask her students to stay after school if she noticed they were struggling a little bit, just to kind of take the time, like sacrifice her own time 
to help them. But on October 22nd, 2013, everything would change. That day, she had asked two students to stay after school. One of those students would be Philip Kism. Now, Phillips had just moved from Clarksville, Tennessee, and he was described as a rather shy student. Philip was dealing with his parents' divorce, which, you know, divorce is, I feel like, a thousand times harder, usually on the children rather than the adults. So he was pretty traumatized. The court papers on the separation show that his father agreed during the separation from his mother to have restricted time with his son. Philip at that point was two. So, I mean, I feel like he wouldn't remember too much, but all of this kind of surfacing. This is because the dad had prior physical, emotional, and alcohol abuse. The other student who was in the room at the same time as Philip said that when Mrs. Ritzer asked Philip about coming from Tennessee, moving from Tennessee, how he was doing with the move, Philip got pretty agitated. So Colleen changed the subject. Now around 3 p.m., Colleen went to the restroom. She had went into a second floor girls room because the faculty one was occupied at the time. And after a little while of her being out of the classroom, Philip followed her. Now, all of this was actually caught all the hallway footage. Philip covered his face with his hoodie and pulled out a box cutter and his gloves after entering the bathroom. After this, he scared Colleen from behind and proceeded to cut her throat six Teen times. The prosecution's final witness, the pathologist who performed her autopsy, showing a diagram of 16 knife wounds and signs of choking. With the box cutter. He also brutally raped her. His pants were covered in blood. Now, shortly after Philip had entered the bathroom, however, a female student walked in and then very shortly left. She told investigators that she saw the back of a person who had appeared to be changing. The person's rear was exposed with clothes piled on the floor. Now, after this, he left the bathroom very casually and then returned in a different jacket and a school recycling bin. In between leaving the restroom and getting the recycling bin. He even talked to other students and seemed fine. Like nothing happened. Which is horrifying. That he didn't show any signs as he was talking to his peers. He then proceeded to dump her body in the woods, only 20 feet from the school. So it was really close. And he also dumped his gloves and he staged her body in a sexually violating way by spreading her legs and pulling up her shirt. And then he stuck a three fork tree branch in her body. He left a note near her body that said, I hate you all. He left the trash can 20 yards from her body. Soon after he killed her, he went to BJ's Wholesale Club to buy a drink. He was calm as though nothing had just happened. He was accused of using Colleen's credit cards to buy Wendy's for lunch and then went to the movies. So he was being very careless. Like he clearly wanted to get caught. He didn't care if he got caught. Now the theater wasn't far from where he lived with his mom and his two sisters. Which is even more terrifying because he was raised mostly by his mom 
And he had two sisters. And he did this to another woman? Like... Colleen was reported missing on Tuesday, as well as Philip. So they're both reported missing. Philip was reported missing by his mother on the evening of October 22nd. He's had his cell phone company ping his phone location. Then they learned that his phone was in the vicinity of the Hollywood Hits Theater, where they then learned that he had purchased a movie ticket and then he left. Police started their investigation at the crime scene, so in the bathroom of the school, where the restroom was literally covered in blood. Philip was found shortly after midnight, walking along a highway. A bloody box cutter, mask, gloves, and a hooded sweatshirt were later found in his backpack by police who found him walking. When police asked him where all the blood came from, he just responded, the girl. It's horrifying. Philip's lawyer said he should be acquitted from the rape in the woods because by that time, Colleen was dead. However, Philip didn't deliver the fatal stab wounds to Colleen until after they were outside. So it's quite possible that she could have been alive during that. And police actually believed that she was. Philip went on to tell police officers that Colleen was responsible for her own death. And while being interviewed by investigators, Philip was very far from compliant. He would correct the officers and he would clarify things. He was very careful as his description to the murder, which is different from the reality. And he minimized how many times he had stabbed her and almost acted like the sexual assault was no big deal. When asked why he had done it, he said that he wanted to go to juvie. He wanted to escape. So he literally had a purpose. This, this was, it was clearly premeditated, this entire thing. There were three stab wounds that were so sharp that they could have ruptured major blood vessels. The pathologist said that it could have been the stab wounds or the strangulation that caused her death. It was said to be a sexually motivated homicide. It showed that the murder was planned because he carried a box cutter, gloves, and multiple changes of clothes to school on the day of the murder. Philip's attorney had asked the judges to dismiss theft charges, but they were denied because he had some of Colleen's belongings on him when they found him. They had her credit cards and her underwear. Philip was charged with felony murder, rape, and robbery. His hearing was on December 22nd, and his mother left shortly after it started. So you could tell that, like, this traumatized her quite a bit. Like, she was pretty, not to put words in her mouth or anything, but the fact that she left so quickly, like, you can tell that she was pretty disgusted by her son's behavior, which I would be. During the trial, Philip's lawyer admitted that Philip killed Colleen because there's no dismissing that. Colleen Ritzer's friend and fellow math teacher wiped her eyes as she watched surveillance of Ritzer's last moments alive. Dressed as twins for a special buddy day at Danvers High, Sarah Giaquinta had peeked in on Ritzer's classroom after school. Inside, she saw the teenager now standing trial in Ritzer's murder. Philip Chisholm was only 14 then. She said, I don't know why he's here. Prosecutors say he was waiting to follow her, stalk, rape, and kill her. But he said that he was suffering a severe mental illness and therefore said that he was not criminally responsible for his actions. A psychiatrist who tested for the defense said that Philip was hearing voices and was in the middle of a psychotic episode when he killed Ritzer. Now, in the state of Massachusetts, life without parole is the state's highest, most severe penalty because they don't do death penalty. But since Philip was only 14 at the time of the murder, he couldn't get that even though he was tried as an adult. He instead got a 40-year sentence, which also means that he could file for a release from jail even though he committed this horrendous crime. 
Philip showed no emotion while being sentenced and he was sentenced in 2016. Now Philip's mother issued a brief statement before the sentencing hearing saying words can't express the amount of pain and sorrow these past two and a half years have been. However, there is no one who has suffered more than the Ritzer family. My utmost esteem prayers and humble respect is with them today as they continue through their journey to heal. So Colleen was only 24 at the time she was murdered, which is quite terrifying to me because I'm 25. So very close to my age. And the fact that she literally like she was going to work. And I know that there's a lot of scary things that happen in schools nowadays. But I feel like when you're a teacher and stuff, you don't ever think that that's going to happen. She was literally, she was going and just doing her job. Now, while Philip was awaiting trial in 2014, he committed another attack on a female staff member in the youth facility he was staying in. He made sure he wasn't being watched while he began his attack. As the 29-year-old woman walked into a locker room, Philip took his shoes off. So his shoes wouldn't make any noise. And then he slammed her against the wall, poked, punched, and stabbed her with a pencil. The woman was actually saved by another staff member who heard the commotion and rushed in to help. Now, Philip was charged for attempted murder by strangulation, assault with intent to murder, kidnapping, and two counts of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. So it's so horrifying how young something like this can start first attack he was a kid and he did this horrible thing and clearly it wasn't just a one-time thing because he tried again so people like this to me i'm sorry if this offends anybody but people like this i feel should be just not by anybody else ever if you guys are enjoying these true crime cases definitely make sure to like this video and comment down below to let me know or hit that subscribe button that way you get notified every time i upload so make sure that bell's on don't forget to check out earth Rays because they are an amazing company again my link is down below and until next time i love you guys bye